Hey everybody, in this Coded Quick, we're going to make something called an image denoiser using a convolutional autoencoder in TensorFlow. And I know this sounds scary and you're probably already intimidated, but don't worry, I'm going to go over the code with you. We're going to look at the pieces of the code that matter and what you can copy and paste and what's actually important to understand and how it works and exactly what it's doing so that we actually get a cool result, which is we're able to make a model that can take data that looks noisy like this and then reproduce the actual image of what we really Really want it to be. It's also important to note that if you are training this model, Google Colab is able to do it, but it'll take a fair amount of time. I made sure to use my GPU setup on my computer because it does it over 100 times faster, but it's not necessary. Colab will do it. Okay, now stick with me when we go through the code, and don't worry if you don't understand everything. Just listen to what I say, and that's okay. So first thing, we're going to import TensorFlow as TF. Clearly, I do this again for some reason, and don't worry about that. <laughs> so as normal, we're going to get the MNIST dataset, which is just a training X array, a training Y array, where we have 60,028 by 28 images, that each of them look something like this, and each of them are also accompanied with their label of what digit they are. So this is train X, and train y and this is the same format but this is test x where we have 10,000 of them and test y it's 10,000 labels. We're actually going to add noise to the data and to do this we add this tensor thing called a random normal distribution and so we give that the shape of the training x array so that we basically add the noise so that it looks something like this instead. You can see it's kind of fuzzy that's what that effect is doing. And this function, although it's complicated, don't worry about what it's actually doing, it's just a complicated function that's going to graph each of these two different lines, and so we can call it with the original, and so that's the normal data, and then the noisy. Now what our model is trying to do is map messy or noisy data like this into its actual proper input. And so to do that, we have to train the model to do this. So the training input is going to be the messy training input, and the output of that model, or the y value, we normally set it to y, but it's really the y is just the actual normal training input because we're mapping the dirty of the same thing into the clean of the same thing. And so these y values above are misleading because although this is how we get the MNIST data, these are the labels, which we actually don't really care about in this example. It's not important. We're just mapping the dirty into the clean. And so our test data is going to be the same thing, but with test and the training data is just going to be this training messy into the training clean. So normally we want to work with a training set, a test set, and a validation set and to do that we're going to use a train test split function from scikit-learn that goes like this so if we get x train and then x test and y train and y test well we're going to change that slightly because we're actually going to be passing in our testing information and be ch changing that into validation and test so in here this is going to be the validation and this is going to be the test this is going to be the validation, and this is going to be the test. So if you really think about it, it's going to be mapped into this. And if you don't figure that out, then go ahead and look at the SKLearn documentation. But it's going to map into this, where we have valx noisy and testx noisy as our inputs, and valx and testx as the outputs that are desired from our testx noisy and our testx. This is our input, this is our output. We map into these inputs and these outputs. If you didn't get that, please check the documentation. Now this piece is very important because we want to get the best model and to do this we want to make sure we monitor the validation loss. So here we're going to get a callback model checkpoint and we call with these specific things which basically says keep saving to this specific file path I called image denoiser where we're constantly saving our model to this only based off of the lowest validation loss and we'll specify shortly how to actually measure that validation. Now here's where we actually make the model and don't worry about the scary code I'm going to explain the pieces that are actually important and you can copy and paste what you need to do later. So we're going to get input layer conf2d conf2d transpose reshape in lambda and let me say why right away. So input that's going to be our input that makes sense. Convolutions this is going to what we call downsample the image which basically gets a smaller representation of the same image but you know there's less pixels and then conf2d transpose we're going to need that because basically it's the opposite of convolution we're actually upsampling or making a higher resolution image and we need to do this because this is still an auto encoder basically what we're doing is shrinking the image down into some middle layers and then 
upsampling them later so that we get the same image back. And we're going to reshape in Lambda just for some convenience functions here. We're going to need the model and sequential model as well as the mean squared error function. Okay, so what we do is we have two pieces. We have the encoder and decoder just like an autoencoder normally does. And a call function is simply going to be encode it and then decode it. Now what the encoder does is it takes our input which is going to be a 28 by 28 image and then we're going to basically extend that so we have 28 by 28 by 1 and reshape that. Now this isn't necessary particularly but it's usually useful to do some sort of pre-processing here and so we're going to do a lambda that divides x by 255 which basically makes sure all the values are between 0 and 1 because normally the max is between uh, 0 and 255 but then we get it to be 0 and 1 here. Okay and then we do some convolutional layers here. Generally we use the activation of ReLU. We do another one here and so then we have some smaller pixel image or pixel array in the middle and then what we do is call the decoder which is basically going to take that except increase the size of that get it back to what it used to be and it turns out that these specific dimensions it actually makes it back into a 28 by 28 by 1 image. So we're going to make an autoencoder which is basically just called I've called it denoise and so we're going to compile it with the optimizer of Atom, and we're going to make it the mean squared error, because notice what I did at the end here is I made the activation at the end to be ReLU. And this actually makes sense, because we want the values to be between 0 and 255, well I might as well make it ReLU, which is the max of 0 and the absolute value of x, and so that's going to make sure it has positive values. Linear here probably would have done basically the exact same thing. So we're going to make an autoencoder by compiling it with the atom and use the mean squared error function as well as fitting it with the train x noisy as our input. We're trying to map that to the clean train x. We're using the validation is going to be the validation is the noisy as the input and map that to the validation x. We want our callbacks to be that checkpoint from above to make sure that it's always saving this model only if the actual validation loss specified by the, the mean squared error of this loss right here is lower than it used to be. Now again this actually trains the model and unless you're using a strong GPU this is going to take a while although on any machine it's not horrendously slow for this particular example. So we see that the loss goes down and down and don't worry too much about this and sorry for the headache. Eventually we get it quite a bit lower and we're going to get some loss which is fairly low for our problem and we'll find out that this is actually good enough. So we're going to summarize first the encoder part to show you again that basically all it's doing is creating a smaller and smaller image and then what it's doing is calling the decoder and it makes it bigger and bigger until we get 28 by 28 by 1 again. So now what we're going to do is run the noisy text information through the model and so we get text x denoised which is the autoencoder so that's its output on the test x noisy. Okay so then we convert that to numpy and here's our shape of 2500 images 28 by 28 by 1 which are hopefully these clean images and that's what the model we're really hoping that it did is that it converted all of these noisy text decks so here's the noisy text decks and hopefully it converted that into clean or denoised text information. And then we actually need to do a reshape because normally it's 28 by 28 by 1 Okay, so that's what it was before, except we didn't do a reshape at the end, so we're going to convert it back into 2500 by 28 by 28, just removing that extra dimension with a reshape, and then we can plot both the original and noisy, and this part is kind of weird, it's just my function is wrong, because this is saying it's the original, and this is the original plus noise, actually up the top here, this is the original, which is the noisy data, and so down here it's actually the original, but denoised. So this is our result, it's it actually took all of these noise noisy images that it hasn't seen before and it cleaned them up to make them perfect and nice and pretty. So that is the main point of an image denoiser. Don't worry if you didn't understand all the code, it's really not a big deal. I have the code down below and hopefully you got the, the right idea of what this could be used for to clean images and just a good example of training a neural network to do something interesting. So uh, I have all the information down below if you want to check it out and I will see you in the next video.